source. I have things that make light, but nothing that's a constant light. The shield sash? No, it's just a red cloth sash. The portal? There you go. Thanks, stranger. Maybe I'll be able to find my way out of here now. Here, take this. Small red bead necklace up to your cussed palms. That was an impressive throw. Safe travels. Try not to fall through the evil portal. And don't use it or it'll disappear. I got the necklace. Okay, I got everything here. This bead certainly attracts a lot of attention. Maybe I can channel the presence, that presence, into a weapon for you. Lawson gets one look at the silver bead and begins dancing. You don't question it. Gazer has you pitch the silver bead towards him and then bats it away with his hand. Mid-flight. <laughs> he, he needs to be more careful with the loot you collect. Necklace. This necklace has been in darkness for a long time. I can fuel the darkness. Uh, I can fuel the darkness extract into a weapon for you. My item will make you mysterious and hard to see. Gazer smears his face against the spaceship window. Someone's gonna have to clean that. Gazer. A bull. And this looks like something to make people stunned. So let's get that. A homing dagger. That's the sealed door. Let's give it some attention. Give it the animal feed. I still have the animal feed. Is it the thing that I should give the animal feed to? It doesn't look particularly starving, but sure. Let's take him with us. I got a Kamusa buddy! Even the fiercest titan. Neat. Let's look at my key items. I got the chest combination, the dash flute, a first aid kit. Kamusa buddy, a life raft, life water, ripe budberries, and a shell berry. And that just goes in here. But I got another thing for it. So let's check out the secret passage. This room has been completely destroyed. Bad dead bandits litter, litter the ground. This does not look promising. Uh, it looks like the ground gave way before this bandit's head did. Handcrafted pottery is now in ruins. What a waste. This room is falling apart. Watch where you step. A uh, branch of rare shell fruit hangs over the large dark pit. Strange to see it growing in a place like that. Let's grab a piece. Oh yeah. I'm sure I know what that is. I think I need shell berries for something, but... Oh! Darn! I only had one chance to do that. I can't... Darn. Gotta remember, you can only really check these things on the first try. Take a peek. You stand on a piece of debris and look through the hole. The sound of flapping wings gets closer. Huh? A ninja peeven? What the heck? Well, I'm sure that the evil Askela will be chasing me soon. 
Oh, it looks like it leads to the roof, but there's something guarding it. It's... Is that a three-headed Alka Beast? Those of massive animal cages stacked high on both sides of the walkway. There's a little sniper tower stand in front of the entrance. You can't help but wonder what they're guarding. I feel like there's more to this place. this. Oh well. That is a big Alka Beast. You don't see a way past it. Approach it. And the Alka Beast suddenly turns towards you. Hey. Somehow offended the Alka Beast. <laughs> Alka Beast swings its arm into a nearby sniper tower. Each structure collapses upon you, pinning you down with its weight. As the Mammoth Beast approaches you, you smart Juro on another Archer Tower. It takes one look at your situation and doubles back. Hey, stranger, I, uh, see you've got this covered. Uh... Help? What am I supposed to do? Uh... <laughs> I don't know, what would be good for him? Like, throwing a javelin would only... turn the bandit, the beast towards him, and I don't want Jero to get hurt, so get the debris off me. You can't lift it. I can't lift it. You're stronger than me. Throw a javelin. Throws a javelin into its back. The beast doesn't even seem to notice it. It didn't do anything. Throw another. It's not even stunned. It's getting bigger. <laughs> Sing it a lullaby. It belts out the most passionate lullaby you've ever heard. It does nothing but irritate both you and the Aka Beast. And again. There's another javelin towards it. Reedy thump in the Alka Beast's back. The javelin bounces harmlessly to the ground. This is a giant claw. Another summon leads on its back, impaling it through the jaw with an electrified javelin. All three Alka Beast's heads howl in agony as Jarrell executes a flawless aerial off its back and runs over to your aid. Grabbing you by the arms, Zero yanks you from the debris and you both begin running from the furious Alka Beast. See, I told you you could get me out of there. It's going to catch us. Uh, knock its legs out from under it with a wind weapon. I just got one of those. Yeah, it's the flinger fingers. Like a beast is caught off guard by your flinger fingers. Constantly get to stumble forward. This way, quick! As the drill leaps onto the large stack of cages, a massive monster crashes into the rusty gate ahead. Screeching furiously, the monster turns and... Swings its arm towards you and Juro. A heavy ally? Do I have a heavy ally? I don't know what qualifies as a heavy ally. The guy riding the Alka Beast, maybe? The Trapper? Yeah! You just jumped onto it with another Alka Beast. Leaping onto the monster's back, you and Juro, uh, you and Juro hop onto the set of uh, the set of cages on the other side just before its massive fists sends sprawling metal crashing in all directions. Howling man maniacally, the Alka Beast pulls itself from the cagey mess and charges back at you. Here comes again, a uh, small ally. I know I have a small ally. Peven, get him! Swiftly moves beneath the Alka Beast's shin. Screeching madly, Alka Beast stumbles forward, slams face first into the stack of cages that you and Juro are on top of. You and Juro leap off the cages and slide down the giant's back before landing on the ground below. Giant rips its many snouts from the wrecked pile of metal, drawing he's several more javelins into its skulls. Wailing in agony, the creature stumbles forward a few steps, then collapses into the ground, panting heavily. Out of javelins, what are we going to do? 
We could finish it off or make a break for the tower. Run for the tower! We've done enough to this thing already. See you again soon, partner. Flashes you in its upright thumb. Thumbs up, Juro. And hastily makes his exit while you make a break for the tower to the east. Defeated, the giant Alcabees lumbers off through the western fence, perhaps to vent its rage on some helpless mandates. Yay, and I didn't kill it. It's just a dumb animal after all. But now we can transition to the next area, and we had a nice action scene with Juro. He saved us. I don't see anything else in here. That's something we missed. I didn't use a heavy ally. Alright, I guess that's everything in the uh, fortress proper. Now we're going to the tower. Gazer steps in front of you. Gazer puts his fists up. You want to fight? Gazer nods. Fight Gazer! What will you do? Uh, let Gazer attack first. Gazer stares at you. Gazer walks away. Gazer bangs on the TV. Having some trouble with the TV? Gazer nods, bends the antenna. The reception looks fine to me. Gazer shakes his head and continues bending the antenna. Is it supposed to look pixelated like that? Gazer rolls his eyes. <laughs> if you don't have a mouth, how do you talk? Gazer points the area directly below his waistline. You serious? Gazer rolls his eyes. <laughs> okay, Gazer, you have fun. Kick the TV. Wonder what would happen if I had punched him. Hey, Falson, you're kind of in my business. Hi, friend. Tell me about some of the places you've been. Okay, here's a good one. We visited a planet where the creatures had no standard size. Some remained tiny, while others grew to the heights of mighty mountains. Naturally, all the big creatures tried to enslave the small creatures, leading to a massive mini-uprising. Literally joining forces, the tiny creatures fused their bodies to become larger than all the tall creatures who had op opposed them before. The now larger creatures immediately seize control of their former tormentors and reversing their roles completely. Hope there's enough room on the planet for the next revolution. Tell me another. Okay, here's a good one. I recall a planet where the people were completely obsessed with their looks. Funneling all their resources into vanity, these creatures grew so confident that they issued an intergalactic competition of beauty. Out of 256 competing planets, they got last place. I forgot to mention that they were giant pus-viewing frogs. <laughs> Another? Here's a good one. On one planet we went to, there were these tiny parasites that could get inside your stomach and starve you to death, feasting on everything you consumed. Strangely, the people on that planet would intentionally eat them, swallowing the moles, sometimes dozens at a time. That's when Kamaho figured it out. Years of reckless technology evolution had rendered the, all produce on this planet so toxic that the people were using these parasites to digest their food for them. Once the parasites had digested food, the people would down a special acid to break down the parasites into life-sustaining nutrients. Kind of a roundabout way to eat, huh? Anyway, they were wiped out by a meteor. You are very close to me. Thanks, friend. You're very close to me, too. Why are you so close to me? Because I like you. I like you, too. <laughs> he flushed. See you later. Bye, friend. Nothing else out there, but here's Kamaho. Oh, hello. How can I help you? What do you think's going on? Oh, on Alita? It's quite unfortunate that the Das have decided to raid while you're there. They sound like strong opponents. Be careful. Also, I'm not sure what to think about the Gisa. It seems powerful. Keep pursuing that and maybe you'll find a source of fuel we're looking for. Also, I can't shake the feeling that there's something more going on here than we realize. What are you feeding the plant? It's human blood. I'm joking, of course. Falson acquired this plant in his travels. Feeds on a special formula made from compressed star butter and liquefied mandrake stem. However, these mandrakes were alive before we liquefied them, so I guess that doesn't make things much better. See you soon. Some sort of eyeball Venus flytrap thing.
the DOS assault. After a nearly endless flight of stairs, you emerge onto the rooftop of the tower. A titanic roar shakes the building. Just outside, a massive creature stomps through the forest. That is a Giza beast. Hopefully it's not interested in you, because it looks pretty big if those are trees. And that's the window. So now we have... It still says one use of shell berries, but I did get a second one. I guess it doesn't matter. I could have sworn we needed more than one, though, for a thing that happens later. Healing fluid is good. Everything's all filled up. Never misses. That's pretty good. Another thing that I can have for 100% accuracy. Let me see something real quick. Alright, sorry about that. I think that is a good spot to call it. We'll just split these up by area. So we just did the Vindal Fortress, and now we're at Das Assault, which is still within the Vindal Fortress, but things are going on that kind of render the Vult Vindal Fortress moot, namely the Das. So we'll see what's going on there. We'll also see what's going on with, like, Gisazilla that's outside here. I think I could see him if I look through the torn wall here. But, uh, yeah, for now, I think that's good. I really enjoy this game. I hope they make another one. But it's kind of old, and I think they're working on something completely different. Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Take care for now. Goodbye.